Okay, so good morning, everyone. First of all, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm really happy to be here. And today I will talk about an example of rubber manning obstruction to weak approximation that comes from a prime with good reduction. And in the first part of the talk, I will introduce some tools needed to understand what the Brouwer Manning obstruction is. And then I will talk about my example gave and give some motivation behind this example. Okay, I will start with some fixing some notation. So during this talk, I will denote by k any number field. and by capital omega k, the set of places of k. And moreover, for every place, I will denote by k of nu, the completion of k at the place nu. Okay, and uh, I will denote by x over k a uh, nice k variety, which means for me a smooth, proper, and geometrically integral k variety. Okay, so. Uh, we are interested in studying, so uh, the set of k points on x, and uh, so the first uh, observation is the following. So for every place we have an inclusion of the k points on x inside the k nu points on x. So th these are like, these are varieties, so locally th these are defined by polynomials and the k points are just the solution, locally are just the solution of this polynomial equation. And it comes from the fact that the field k is contained in the field uh, k nu for every place nu. And so this implies that the set of k points can be seen naturally inside the product over all the places of the set of k nu points on x. And we want to study the set of k points by looking at the image of the set of k points inside the product over all the places of the k nu points. And so the, the key observation now is that uh, for every place nu, one can put a topology on the set of k nu points on x. Uh, And again, like the idea is that locally these are just solution of polynomial equations. So these are nuples with coordinates in the field k nu. And these fields k nu have a topology. And this allows us to put at least locally in an easy way a topology on the set of k nu points on x. And then for varieties that are nice enough, one can glue this topology together in order to get a topology on the set of k nu points. And so therefore, also the product over all the places has a topology, which is just a product topology. Okay, and so we are ready to give the definition of weak approximation. So we say that X satisfy Weak approximation if the image of the k points inside the product over all the places of the k nu points is dense. Okay, so now I want to briefly explain what the brouwer manning obstruction to weak approximation is. And so 
uh, Menin in uh, 1917 uh, introduced like the use of the Brower group in order to study the image of the K points inside the product over all the places of the KNU points. And the idea is uh, the following. So, Manin's idea was to use the Brower group uh, to build a close, this is like will be important for us, subset. Which I will denote just by the product over all the places where I put here Brower to indicate that the Brower group is involved in the construction. This is a closed subset of the product over all the places of the Kenu points. And so this is such that uh, the K points. Uh, lies inside this Brower set. Okay, so Okay, so now I want to separate that since this Brower set is closed, we have a chain of inclusion, which is given by the K points. And th this lies inside the closure of the K points inside the product over all the places. But since this Brower set is closed and contains the K points, contains also the closure of the K points. So the closure of the K points can be seen as a subset of this Brower set which is okay, a subset of the product of all. Okay, so with this chain of inclusion in mind, we, we can give the definition of brower manning obstruction to weak approximation. So we say that there is a brower manning obstruction weak approximation if the Brower Manning set is a proper subset of the product over all the places. So let me just point out that indeed if the Brower set is a proper subset, then because of this chain of inclusion we have that also the closure of the K points has to be a proper subset of the product over the places of the KNU points. So really, if that happens, that gives us uh, an obstruction to weak approximation because the K points cannot be dense inside the product over all the places of the KNU points. Okay, but so I will talk about an example where there is a brower manning obstruction to weak approximation. So in order to explain a little bit better the example, I need to tell you something more about how this brower manning set is constructed. I will not like do all the de details about the construction, but just give an, an idea behind the construction. So, so the the first thing is that. So for the Brouwer group, so we fix an element A in the Brouwer group of X. This is the second etal cohomology group with respect to the shift GM. And uh, okay, so for every for every place, there there is a map which is called evaluation map that goes from the k, po k nu points on X to the Brower group of KNU. And 
for every place, we have also an inclusion of the Brower group of Kenyo inside Q over Z. So for non-Archimedean places, this is just an isomorphism, while for Archimedean places, it depends if this is the real number, this is, this is trivial, so this is just the inclusion of zero here, and if it's the complex number, then send the quaternion algebra to the class of one half. But okay, the point is that I will, during this talk, I will denote by the evaluation map also this composition with the use of notation. So for me, the evaluation maps go from the KNU points on X inside Q over Z. Okay, and uh, so the key point in the construction of the brower manning set is that the K points lies inside the subset of the KNU points, of the product of the KNU points on, on, on X, such that the sum of the evaluation map on X nu is zero. So here I am adding something because like a priori it's not clear that this sum is involves just a finite number of terms, but for nice varieties, for example, if the variety is proper, then it is the case, so actually it makes sense to write this sum. And the Bra so the brower manning set is uh, defined uh, in the following way. So it's defined as the intersection over all the elements in the Brouwer group of X of this set. So. Okay, so So okay, we see that like it's really important to understand this, how this evaluation map behaves in order to study the brower manning abstraction. And in particular, I want to point out the following thing. So assume that there exists a place such that the evaluation map associated to an element, a fixed element in the Brouwer group from the new points in Q over Z is non-constant. Okay, so let uh, x nu zero and y nu zero be such that they give a different evaluation. The evaluation map is different on these two points. Then like, okay, we are also assuming some non-triviality in the sense that we, we are interested in the case where this product over all the places of K no points is non-trivial. So we can construct a point, so if we pick the point and the point Y nu, so these points are such that for every nu difference from nu zero, these are the same. So X nu is equal to Y nu while uh, x nu zero and y nu zero are these two special elements. Okay, then we get that the sum of the evaluation map of x nu has to be different from the sum of the evaluation map of y nu, which means that at least one between these two is different from zero. And therefore, the brower manning set is a proper subset. So. so in order to study this uh, brower manning abstraction, it makes sense to look at this evaluation map and study if these maps are constant or not. And Therefore, I want to give the following definition. 
So we say that a place, nu, plays a role in the Brouwer Manning obstruction. Obstruction to weak approximation. If there exists an element in the Brouwer group such that the evaluation map from the KNU points inside Q over Z is non-constant. So at this point, a, a natural question that arises is the following. This question was asked by Squinton Tundayer, and it's, uh, he asked, so assume that uh, X is such that he put a condition on the Picard group over an algebraic closure of the variety. This is just the base change to an algebraic closure. And he asked this to be torsion free. And finitely generated. Okay, so the question is, uh, then is it true that uh, uh, the, the only places Involved, involved in the sense of the definition above in the Brouwer Manning obstruction to weak approximation are so the Archimedean places and the places of bad reduction. So Yes, like well, he he was asking like if one has control about the places that might be involved in this Brouwer Manning obstruction to weak approximation, and uh, yes, there was how the need to add this condition on the Picard group because otherwise it was known that uh, the answer was negative. Okay, so okay, and so there was a partial answer given by Lyotelen and Skorobogatov. So So um, under the, the hypothesis of the question, so the, under the hypothesis that the picker group is torsion free and finitely generated, so we, we define the algebraic Brouwer group of X as the kernel. So it's uh, the subgroup of the Brouwer group given by those elements that become trivial over an algebraic closure. over the base change to an algebraic closure of the variety. And uh, so what, what they prove is the following thing. So if we assume that we, we pick a subset of the places of K consisting of those elements
So it's the subset is given by the Archimedean places. The okay, the places of bad reduction. So the the places that are also part of the question asked by Stinton and Dyer. So places. And a uh, third family of places, which is given by the places dividing the order of the quotient of the Brouwer group with respect to the algebraic Brouwer group, this Brouwer one of X. Okay, then every place outside this set is not involved in the brouwer manin obstruction to weak approximation. So for every place outside S and for every A in the Brouwer group of X, the evaluation map is constant. So we see that like with these results, we, we get an uh, example of variety for which the answer to Swinton Dyer question is positive. For example, in the case where the Brouwer group is algebraic, then uh, the un we get uh, varieties for which the answer is positive. Or for, place for varieties for which all the places that divide this order are contained in the place of bad reduction, we get a positive answer to the question. And uh, okay, but like in 2020, uh, Martin Wright and Rachel Newton were able to prove a result that gives a negative answer in general to the question. And uh, my example is uh, pretty related to this result that they have proven. So in order to okay, in order to state the result, I need first to give a definition of, okay. Okay, so um, we start with the following definition. So if we start with a variety now over a perfect field of characteristic P, so K is perfect. Then we define the chief of X at Q, X at form on Y as the image chief of the differential map that goes from the Q minus one form to the Q form on Y. And okay, we say that a variety Y is ordinary if the cohomology group, so this et al cohomology group of this shift BYQ are trivial for every N and Q. Okay, so this, this definition, like, I don't know, to me it was like a quite difficult to understand this definition in the sense that it's difficult to have control about this, to be able to compute all this, uh, all this cohomology group, but like 
what happened is that in some cases, like there are equivalent definitions that are easier to control. So for example, uh, for uh, if Y is an abelian variety, then we, we get the, like, the usual definition of ordinarity, which is, so Y is ordinary, if and only if the set of p torsion points over an algebraic closure is isomorphic to O. This Z over PZ to the dimension of Y. And another example for which it's easy to, to decide if the variety is ordinary or, or, or not is given by K3 surface over finite field, and like I'm telling you that also because I will talk about a K3 surface over a finite field. So, um, so if Y over, let's say over FP uh, is a K3 surface, then what happened is that Y is ordinary if and only if the cardinality of set of FP points on Y is not congruent to one mod P. So th this is like, for K3 surface, it's really easy to, over finite field, it's really easy to say if they are ordinary or not, because this is something that one can compute, at least if you have like the explicit definition of the K3 surface, which will be the case for, for my example. Like it will, I, I will give an explicit definition of the K3 surface. And uh, okay, so we are ready to state the result proven by Bright and Newton. So, it was proven last year in 2020. And so, if we start with a variety over a number field, now K is again a number field. such that there is at least a non-trivial two-global form. So this is non-trivial. Um, and let P be a prime of good ordinary reduction. Okay, then they, they proved that there exists a finite field expansion L over K um, and a prime P prime over P. Uh, and an element A in the Brouwer group of X of order a power of P, where P is the characteristic of the residue field of this gothic P, uh, such that the evaluation map from the LP prime points, again, in Q over Z, is non-constant. So, this result is telling us that if we start with a variety with a non-trivial global two form, and the variety has a prime with good ordinary reduction, then up to taking a base change to a field extension of K, there is always a prime of good reduction involved in the brouwer manning obstruction to this approximation. Because this prime P prime, since it lies over P, is still a prime of good uh, reduction. And it's, it, it is involved in the brouwer manning obstruction to weak approximation because this evaluation map has to be non-constant. Okay, so uh, as I already told you, I will talk about an example of a K3 surface where this phenomenon occurs. So I will uh, quickly remind you what K3 surfaces are. And okay.
No, probably I I should uh, use the yes. It's over L. Yes. Names. Okay, so. Uh, Uh, so K3 surface is a K3 surface if uh, it has dimension two and so there are two conditions. The first one is on the vanishing of the first cohomology group of the structural sheet. This is trivial. And uh, the second one is that the Canonical line bundle is trivial. Okay, and so the the easiest example probably of K3 surface uh, are given by um, smooth uh, defined by so uh, variety defined by a smooth homogeneous polynomial of degree four. Okay, so now I'm ready to introduce the example. And uh, okay, so th the second part of the talk will be about this special example. Okay, so for X from now on will be the K3 surface over the rational number defined by the homogeneous polynomial given by by the following equation okay and uh, so the first thing is that uh, x has good Ordinary reduction at two. So probably, like I should have said before, something more about K3 surface and why I'm looking at a K3 surface. And the reason is, uh, so it's the following observation. So the first thing is that um, the picker group of a K3 surface over an algebraic closure is always torsion free and finitely generated. So the, the, the thing that was asked in the Swinton Don Dyer question is satisfied. The second thing is that the, there is always a non-trivial global two form so this is non-zero. In fact, this is a one-dimensional k-vector space. And so also the condition asked in uh, Bright and Newton theorem is satisfied. And then I want to mention also a third thing that somehow justify the fact that we were looking for a k3 surface with good reduction at the prime two. So this is also a result proven, proven by Bright and Newton. And they show that uh, if P is of good reduction, is a prime of good reduction, and the ramification index is strictly less than P minus one, then the evaluation map from the P points to Q over Z is constant. So, so if we work over the rational number and we start with a place with a prime of good reduction, then we always have that this is satisfied because the ramification index is one. And since the prime, if we look at the prime different from two and this P minus one is strictly bigger than one. And therefore this, this, this primes cannot be involved in, uh, in the Brouwer-Mannin abstraction. So if we want to work over the rational number with a K3 surface, 
then our only possibility to find a place of good reduction involved in the Brauermann obstruction is to look at the prime key equal to. And that somehow justified the construction of this example because this is a K3 surface for which two is a prime with good ordinary reduction. Okay, so the, the theorem like related to this example is the following. So uh, the class of the quaternion algebra So the quaternion algebra given by the following function, defined by the following function. Which a priori is just an element in the Brouwer group of the function field of the K3 surface. Defines an element in the Brouwer group of the K3 surface. And uh, Moreover, the evaluation map from the Q2 point in Q over Z is non-constant. And also, like, we were able to prove that the rational points are not dense inside the Q2 points. Okay, so uh, if we compare this with the result of Bright and Newton, we see that like here in this example, everything is happening already over the rational number. So there is no need to take a field extension. And also, um, the element has exactly order two, while in the result, the, like the element has order a power of two. Okay, I will not spend much time on the proof of this theorem because I think it's more interesting to talk a little bit about the construction of this quaternion algebra A. And once you have the quaternion algebra, it's quite straightforward to, to prove the result, so I will just mention very quickly the main steps in the proof and then go to the talk a little bit about the construction of this element. Okay, so, so the main steps are the following. So in order to show that the elements A actually lies in the Brouwer group of X, one can use purity theorem for the Brouwer group. So gives us, so, in general, what happened is that the Brouwer group for, for, again, for a nice variety, the Brouwer group of X lies inside the Brouwer group of the function field of X. And purity theorem gives somehow a recipe to detect if actually an element in the Brouwer group of the function fields lies in the Brouwer group of X. But once you have written down the element explicitly, like it's just a computation the, you, to use the purity theorem. You just have to compute some residual maps and so it's quite straightforward. And the second thing is like, in order to show that this evaluation map was non-constant, we really like found two elements, which are two adic solution of the equation 
such that the valuation map in the first is different from the valuation map in the second. And again, also this, like, once you have written down the element explicitly, it's really something computable, the evaluation map at the element. So everything can be done pretty explicitly. And finally, the third thing is in order to show that the rational points are not dense in the two adic points, uh, we have proven that for every place uh, uh, different from two, the evaluation map is constant. And from this and the construction of the Brouwer Manning set, it follows almost immediately that the rational points cannot be dense inside the two adic points. Okay, but so I want to talk a little bit about the construction of the quaternion algebra A. And okay, the first thing I want to tell you is the following observation. So, so um, we will denote by Y the K3 surface over F2. Defined by the equation star. So I'm just looking at the reduction modulo two of this equation and Y is the K3 surface defined by the same Polynomial equation. And as I already know, okay, and this is a K3 surface, which means that the set of global two form is non trivial, and in particular, it is a one dimensional F2 vector space. And this means that there is uh, uh, just one. Uh, non-trivial element inside this uh, space of global two form that I will denote by Y. And I guess since we have the equation defining Y, one can write down explicitly, at least locally, how this element look like. And so what happened is that so locally, omega is of the for following form, can be written in the following way, dF over F, y, wedge dG over G, where F is and g is z over x. So here there is some abuse of notation because I'm, I'm using the same variable for the variety over f2 and for the variety over the rational number, but I think, yes, it becomes a little bit heavy, the notation, if I put a tilde everywhere. And uh, okay, but we see that like, so what this, these two function defining these two form are strictly related to our quaternion algebra because like what happened is that uh, our quaternion algebra A is defined by two function F tilde and G tilde, which are just lift of F and G to the rational, to the variety over the rational number. Like F it's really like the easiest lift that you can take while G there is, it's just a sign. What we change is just a sign. So, Okay, so now the goal of this last part of the talk is to give an idea of why uh, two forms in characteristic two should be related to elements in the Brouwer group. And in order to explain this, the first thing is to mention the, an isomorphism that was proven by Bloch and Cato. Okay, so uh, first, so we, I will denote by F the function field of Y over the, over F2, and uh, uh, we define the sheet, the group of logarithmic Q form on uh, Y as the subgroup of the logarithm, of the Q form of Y uh, generated 
by elements of the form by y1 over y1 by y2 over y2, where this yi are just non-zero elements in the field f. Uh, okay. And uh, so another thing that I need to define before introducing the isomorphism. So I will denote by x2 the base change of the k3 surface over the two adic field. Again, this is just the k3 surface defined by the same poly homogeneous polynomial where we look at the coefficient not anymore inside the rational but inside the two adic field. As a subgroup, as a group, yes. And, uh, and by capital K, uh, the function field of X2. Okay, and so Bloch and Cato define a filtration. Sorry on the Galois groups, Galois cohomology group. So I, I'm focusing my attention on the time too, but like this, this works more generally over uh, field, over piadic field or over extension of piadic field, but now I'm focusing my attention just on the two-adic field because I want just to say things related to the example. And a filtration on so the on this group, and uh, okay, I will not say more about how this filtration is defined, but so the idea is the following now. Okay, so let's say theorem, and this is Bloch and Cato isomorphism. So there is an isomorphism. Uh, Rod zero that goes from the direct sum of the Q minus one logarithmic form on F to the Q form logarithmic form on F to the quotient of this homology group over the first piece of the filtration. So we, we see that this, um, this isomorphism give us a bridge between what happened in characteristic two, because this F is a field of characteristic two, and what happened in characteristic zero, because this K is a field of characteristic zero. But you are not seeing yet uh, the link with the Brouwer group. And so the link with the Brouwer group comes from the following obs observation. So if we fix Q equal to, then we have that, uh, so this Galois module is isomorphic to mu two, and this is just because we're working uh, over a field of characteristic zero, and therefore we have a primitive second root of unity. So this is just because Q minus one is in our field K. And therefore we have an isomorphism between this group and the second cohomology group of the module mu2. And this is 
can be identified as the two torsion part of the Brouwer group of K. Okay, and therefore, like this, this isomorphism induces another isomorphism that, with abuse of notation, I will still denote by rod zero, that goes from the direct sum. of the one form and the two logarithmic form to a quotient of the Brouwer group with a certain subgroup, which is, okay, the first piece of this filtration law. And actually, like, they, Bloch and Kato gave an explicit description of this isomorphism. And what happened is that if we start with omega in a two logarithmic form, then omega is of the form dy, one over one, and so the element zero omega is mapped from by rod zero to the class of the quaternion algebra defined by y one tilde, y two tilde, where so where y one, y one tilde and y two tilde are any two lift. of y1 and y2. So we see that, uh, going back to our example, we had this uh, omega which was given by in So omega was given by dF over f, wedge dg over g, and uh, rod zero of zero omega is equal of, to the class of the quaternion algebra, where our quaternion algebra A is given by F tilde and G tilde. So we see that like we have constructed actually this quaternion algebra in such a way that it was related to uh, a two form in characteristic two. And, uh, but now yes, I want to say why such an element should be special for the brouwer manin obstruction to weak approximation. And Here, now this is the is the first piece of filtration on the Brouwer group induced by the fact that we have a filtration here and we have an isomorphism. So this isomorphism induces a filtration also on the two torsion on the Brouwer group. Yes, it's a U1. And okay, but so, so like why an element that it's related to a two form should be special for the brouwer manin obstruction to weak approximation. So again, this follows from a result by Bright and Newton. So uh, Bright, sorry, first. Bright and Newton have defined a filtration uh, on, let's say on the two torsion part of the brouwer group over X2, which is given by those elements in the brow in the two torsion part of the Brouwer group, uh, such that for every field extension and for every point, L points on X, the evaluation map is constant on, so, I don't want to like do the details about this definition, but the idea is that this n piece of filtration is given by those elements in the Brouwer group for which the evaluation map is locally constant. So it's constant uh, on a certain open subset of the L points on X. And the idea is that uh, if n becomes bigger, then this radius is smaller. So uh, in particular, we are interested in, uh, so in particular, they, they prove that the evaluation zero part of this filtration can be described as those elements in the Brouwer group of X2 
uh, such that so the element lies inside the second piece of the filtration over k so here i the point is that i can see our element inside k because we have another inclusion of the brower group of k2 inside the brower group of k this is a it's just a function field of k2 so it makes sense to say uh, in which piece of the filtration on the brower group of k this element lies and so if it lies in the second piece of it, so they were able to give the following uh, description of the valuation zero part of the brower group and like Maybe I can just, so the idea is that now at this point, I think I'm out of time, but the idea is that uh, so the idea is that since the class of A comes from a non-trivial element in the product of the one logarithmic form with the two logarithmic form, then this class cannot be trivial in the quotient of the Brouwer group with the first piece of the filtration. This is because this is an isomorphism, so if something is not zero here, then it cannot be zero also here, which means that our element A is not in the first piece of the filtration. And uh, since the filtration is a decreasing filtration, it cannot be also in the second piece of the filtration. And uh, therefore, uh, we get that, so this, this implies that A is not in the second piece of the filtration. And therefore, A is not in the evaluation zero part. And if we look at the evaluation zero definition of the evaluation zero part, uh, this means that uh, at, least after, at least over a base change uh, over Q2 of a, of the field Q2, the evaluation map is non-constant. And in the theorem, we proved that everything was happening already over Q2, but like this somehow seems special for this, this example. Like, uh, yes, we are not sure that it's always the case. And yes, okay, I think uh, I will end now because I think I'm out of time. And if you have a question, I'm here. Thank you, Pargarita, for the very beautiful and very clear talk. Are there any questions at all? Mark around? Okay, yes. So, uh, so he asked me why the condition of or good ordinary reduction was important. And so the thing is that at some point I told you that we had a non-trivial, one non-trivial two form on Y. And since Y is ordinary, what happened is that the space of uh, global two form coincides with the space, so. Um, implies that the two forms on Y are all logarithmic. So the fact that we could write down y in, in this form, the f over f wedge dg over g, and so look at y inside the two forms in the function field is strictly related to the fact that we are working with uh, a ordinary variety over f2. So I know, so the place of bad reduction, I think there are three, five, and 17, but I don't know how uh, and how they play a role in the obstruction. No.
Yes, like, I mean, for this element A, they don't play a role in the Bowerman in abstraction, but there could be other elements that for which, yes. Other questions? No, I, so to be honest, I, I think that the problem is that the element A might not be defined over the base field. So I, like, now I, I change the, I look at the variety defined by the same equation where here I put coefficients whose reduction modulo two is one. So, so that the variety is still a K3 surface and, and has the same reduction modulo two, but it's, it's slightly different. And what happened like at the moment is that I'm still able to construct this element A, but it doesn't lie anymore in the broader group of X, but there is the need to take a field extension. But I'm not sure if this an element over the rational number exists, and I'm just not able to write it down, or it doesn't exist at all. But for sure I'm able to write it down over a quadratic field extension of the rational number. So I've got a question possibly related to one of the earlier ones. So do you know how to calculate the Brouwer group, the whole Brouwer group of your example? No. Okay, but the algebraic part of the Brouwer group, can you do that? Yes, so for the algebraic, no, to be honest, I, I don't know how to use, to compute it. This is this is example of complex multiplication, correct? I don't even know that. Anyone? Alexa, Damien? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just because there's all these extra automorphisms allow you to help you calculate the power group. That's what I'm saying. Other questions?